Until this point, I have kept quiet on the strip mining issue in Streetsboro. I have listened to all the competing <coughs> concerns, and I understand that people are against change. I understand that people love the horse farm. I love the horse farm. Let's be real, Saver Farms will not remain a horse farm. The real question today is what would you like to see there? I attended all of the Master Plan Com Citizen Commission meetings in 2012 and 13. Many of you came to this same podium and expressed a desire for an expansion and protection of the rural residential land use and to preserve the rural character in this area. You spoke again at the July 3rd, 2012 zoning open house to confirm your desire to keep it rural. Let me address some of the concerns I heard beginning with homes evaluation. I would like to point out that most of the homes that are brought up were either bought or built in this area with an existing asphalt plant and gravel pit in a very close proximity to their existing residence. One gentleman who spoke at last month's council meeting indicated that Sabra needs to be broken up into five acre lots to build million dollar homes on. Let's be real, the asphalt plant is not going anywhere. It doesn't matter what happens in these chambers or if they run out of sand and gravel in their gravel operation, they will all in. The only subdivision that will ever be built next to an asphalt plant are high density housing developments. You will not see million dollar homes built there. Million dollar home buyers are interested in locations such as homes on Callum Lake or along Price Road, along huge lakes that were the result of reclaimed sand and gravel operations situated in rural settings. Let's talk about the air. One woman spoke out of council, how can we put our little ones at risk? It's a little late for that, don't you think? Time to be concerned about that was in November of 2013 when the bond issue was on the ballot to build a school there. According to our school district, the air quality is nothing to be concerned about. In a Gateway News article from November 14, 2014, our superintendent reported that they tested every possible type of contaminant that could be breathed in at that site and nothing was found at all. I would like to point out that the new high school is much closer to that plan then we're talking about that Let's talk about the water quality. I have heard several concerns regarding contamination and depletion of wells. First of all, the Ohio Revised Code is very strict and has an entire section 1514.13 dedicated to this very issue. In this section, there is also complaint procedures laid out for contamination and depletion of wells. <coughs> The existing mining operation has been there since 1962. And as of today, I can find no record of any complaints regarding contamination or depletion of wells. Within a half a mile radius of this proposed site, there are four lakes that are a result of mining operations. The existing one at Shelley, the Cowan Lake, and the two lakes on the back property. If they were going to be ground, groundwater contamination or depletion issues, they would have already come up in these previous operations. If there was any true threat to the water quality as a result of strip mining, sand and gravel in this area, I am sure Akron Water Works would have been involved as they are extremely close proximity also. <coughs> in closing, this is all about a choice, not a choice that the last master plan commission made. This will be a choice for the direction of our city in that area. Strip mining is in our code in a rural residential reason in the areas for a reason. And the reason is that they create large bodies of water that ensure that they ensure there are transition areas and that urban sprawl will be prevented if you cannot build homes on water. And I assure you that if you disallow this, all you are doing is punting the football down the field. Whether you allow them to mine or not, the asphalt plan is here to stay. Voting no on this issue is not going to be the magic wand that makes the asphalt plant disappear. The choice is clear. A no vote is a yes to urban sprawl, and the only thing that will be disappearing is the rural character on diagonal road. And I look down there, and I like the rural character. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. My name is Julie Verona, 7909 Diagonal Road. I'm here to state why a conditional use permit should not be granted using the six criteria set forth in the zoning code. Number one, the proposed use is not harmonious with the master plan. 
The master plan provides for providing areas where small-scale agriculture is permitted and encouraged. Mining would eliminate agricultural use on the Sabra property and could also interfere with neighboring agricultural uses because it could affect the soil for trees, gardens, etc., and the noise and dust would be disturbing to livestock. The master plan also sets forth encouraging protection of the rural character, the farmland, and the history. Only a couple of historic buildings and farms remain in Streetsboro. We cannot regain historical landmarks once they are demolished. The master plan also sets forth preserving and promoting natural features. Mining strips natural features the city hopes to promote and leaves behind depleted land buried underwater. It's not sensitive to the environment. Also, the master plan sets forth family-friendly, place of pride and quality. The mining is not family friendly and does not evoke a sense of pride. Criteria number two, the proposed use is not harmonious and will change the essential character of the area. It's not harmonious and appropriate. Animals, trees, gardens, country setting is the current character and intent of the area. The petitions indicate that this is not harmonious. Allowing this conditional use will change the essential country character of the area into that of an unsightly sand and gravel pit in the middle of rural countryside. Criteria number three, will be hazardous or disturbing to existing or future neighboring uses. It's hazardous because children and animals living and going to school right next door, breathing in the dust, contaminating the water, and it's also a drowning hazard. It could potentially negatively affect the Lake Rockwell water supply and the eagles on Lake Rockwell, which are protected animals. It could contaminate our water supply, which would negatively affect the health of my family, our gardens, our animals, and our trees. Criteria number four, it will be detrimental to property in the immediate vicinity or to the community as a whole. It will reduce property value and resaleability. It will reduce natural beauty. It will negatively impact our water supply and terminate the gas wells. It's detrimental to the community as a whole because this is part of historic farmland and it's unsightly, noisy, dusty, and traffic. Criteria number five, will not be served adequately by <coughs> essential public facilities and services. The drainage system will be their yard and it'll go down to the neighbor's yards. It'll flood the neighboring community that already gets swampy with rain. It could affect our wells, the Lake Rockwell water supply, and people's basements. And number six, it inter will interfere with traffic. The roads will get more potholes because of the heavy trucks. There will be an increase in traffic, which increases the risk of harm to children playing in the area. And pollution from the trucks will further contaminate our breathable air. For these reasons, I am here to state why the conditional use permit should not be granted. Thank you.